difficult to see his expression when you see him for the first time. After a while, y you understand things, but at the beginning, you, you have the impression that it's like a wall without any emotion. After a bit of time, you see that there's a lot of emotions and a lot of feelings. Stephen, when did you first realize you wanted to be a physicist? Oh. I, uh, I, uh, I think I knew from about the age of nine or ten that I wanted to be a scientist. Most of my activities, like playing with model fireworks or model railways or playing complicated games, was aimed in some way at finding out how the world worked around me. So in a sense, you went from modeling planes to modeling the universe. I was never very good with my hands, so my models did not work very well. But I was always interested in models that I could control. And I think that nowadays I have translated that into studying physics. Because in a way, if you understand the universe, then you have control of it. If Einstein's general theory of relativity is correct, the universe began with a singularity called the Big Bang. Now, because it was a singularity, all the laws of physics broke down. And therefore, we cannot predict how the universe began. Doesn't this sound like a good argument for the belief that God created the universe? A few years ago, I was at a conference on cosmology that was held in the Vatican. And at the end of the conference, the participants were granted an audience with the Pope. The Pope said it was fine for them to inquire into the early history of the universe, but they should not ask questions about the Big Bang itself. Because that was the work of God. However, at that conference, I'd propose that Einstein's general theory of relativity would have to be modified, and that modification would mean that there was no singularity, and all the laws of physics would hold at the Big Bang. And if that is the case, we can completely predict the state of the universe from the laws of physics. What you're saying, does it mean that the universe isn't caused? That's right. The universe does not have any beginning or end. It does not have any cause or consequences. It simply is. The consequences of what you're proposing must be absolutely staggering. Well, most scientists don't like to think too much about philosophical mm. questions. They feel that such questions are really badly defined. Does that include you? No, not including me. So exactly what kind of implications fall out of your proposal? Obviously, implications about the existence and the nature of God. Is there a God who intervenes in the universe, or one who wound up the clock to set things going? But I think that most scientists still reserve judgment on how the universe was set up in the first place. Whether that was an act of God, or whether that too was subject to the laws of science. What I'm suggesting is that it was indeed subject to the laws of science. I heard that when you found out about your disease, you became very bitter and depressed. You drank a lot. What happened to turn everything around? I don't think I became bitter, but I was certainly depressed. I didn't at the time think there was much point in completing my PhD because my life expectancy was so short. The disease progressed rapidly at first, but then seemed to slow down. And around the same time, I began to fully understand the problem I was working on. 
But what really made a difference was that I became engaged to Jane. That meant if I was going to get married, I'd have to get a job. And if I was going to get a job, I'd have to write some papers. So that really started me working. And I've been at it ever since. You were very active here in Cambridge on behalf of the disabled, uh, campaigning for lowered curbs and ramps, this kind of thing. What is your attitude towards your own disability? It is a bit of an inconvenience, but it's not really prevented me from doing what I want to do in life. I've been very fortunate in being able to carry on and that is really due to all the help I've had from my family and my colleagues. I, that should be. But, when but physicists talk among work, themselves, it, it, the conversation often drifts into interpreting the meaning of their equations, especially when it involves dicey notions that fall out of a key equation in quantum mechanics. It's very remarkable. In the 1920s, the uncertainty principle turned our view of the universe upside down. It pointed out that in observing subatomic particles, the process of observation alters in a random way the thing that is observed. What this means is still in dispute, but it does seem that consciousness itself has somehow entered the laws of the universe through the back door. Yeah, so in a sense, the uncertainty principle is telling us that the universe is behaving in a completely chaotic way or in, in, to a certain degree. So one might say that that was the intervention of God, but it would be a rather strange kind of God. Because he would be acting completely in a, in a completely random way. Well, I think that the randomness of quantum mechanics is really a mismatch between quantum mechanics and us. In its own terms, quantum mechanics is deterministic, but there's a mismatch between quantum mechanics and us which makes us think of it as being undeterministic. So Stephen's asking Ed, what, you, what do you mean? It's as if we think that nature should play dice with cubic dice, and nature has chosen instead to use an octahedral dice. So we interpret it by claiming that quantum mechanics is undeterministic. Oh yes, it's just that we were under the illusion that we should be able to determine more about the universe than quantum mechanics would allow. Stephen, do you think of the observer as part of the quantum mechanical system? If you apply quantum mechanics to the whole universe, that would include the observers. My, my view is roughly that when you do quantum mechanics of the whole universe, it's deterministic. Where does God fit into all of this? Well, if Stephen Hawking is right, then the universe would be self-contained. It would not have a boundary at which any conditions could be imposed. We would have to reassess our beliefs about an impersonal God who created all this at the beginning of time. However, the other implication in Stephen's work is that the universe would be the ultimate expression of order. Its boundary condition would be that it has no boundary. It would be perfect like a circle. And what's left open by quantum physics is the mysterious role that the observer plays, the consciousness itself, that looks at all this with awe and wonder. I don't live for science alone. Science is very important to me, but it's not enough. If that were all I had, then my life would be very empty. <laughs> I'm very lucky that I have my family. They're very important to me. They're a source of great joy to you, obviously. Oh, yes.